It's a call that's telling me I'm here to serve. It's a need to make a difference in the world. 24 hours, day or night, these healing hands will make it right. Looking in their eyes, I know that I'm changing lives. Changing lives. Changing lives for the better. For the better. Changing lives. And hi again everyone, Jim Knox along with Dr. Nina and welcome to another episode of Top Docs of Houston, a show that features some of the best doctors as well as procedures in the Houston area. Now here's our first top doctor, it's Dr. Lynn Dickens. So if you're having an allergy problem, she is the perfect doctor for you. Kyle is almost 12 years old and he actually became a patient here a little over a year ago. But he is a pretty basic, typical uh, boy who developed his allergies about the time he started school. Well, Kyle plays um, baseball during uh, spring and uh, fall season. And during spring, his allergies are always acting up. Sneezing, runny nose, coughing, um, what else, nosebleeds. So that prompted us to go to an allergy clinic. He's allergic to the spring trees, the grass in the, in the summer. He's allergic to the weeds in the fall. He's allergic to the mold, but not luckily as much, but animals as well. Well, at home, we give him um, Singular every day. Sometimes we give him Zyrtec. But as far as the clinic, they're planning to put him on a uh, testing, like he's going to get some shots every week, every two weeks. So as soon as school is out, we're going to bring him in here and we're going to do what we call a, a, a modified rush procedure or it's also referred to commonly as cluster immunotherapy. And what we're going to do is we're going to give him multiple doses on one day, building him up quickly through the more dilute vial so that he'll start to see benefits sooner. It will help him a lot. Um, as far as outdoors, I think we can enjoy outdoors more than we do now especially spring season. And the advantage of doing it with shots versus under the tongue is that the immunotherapy that we do has been proven to be effective in actually reducing the amount of allergy uh, antibody that circulates in the blood and also raising the amount of protective antibodies in the blood that prevent you from responding in that fashion. And some true immunological changes occur with the allergy shots. I'm pretty sure he's gonna respond. He's a, a real easy, typical, you know, boy that hasn't quite hit teenage, but is going to start suffering in terms of his sports and his dog and everything else that, um, that he would like to do in his life if he doesn't fix the allergy problem. The ideal patients for dental implants are ones that have been through lots of restorative procedures and there were these procedures that just aren't predictable and so we were able to give them their third set of teeth with the use of, of dental implants. I had an accident when I was 10 years old and I fell down on my face and I dislocated my jaw and I didn't know that then but I started looking for oldest doctor or the one with 35 years or more of experience. So I went to the facility in Gessner and I saw Dr. Metz and they said this is the guy who's gonna have to be working on you. So I had to decide if I wanted to go through with it and I did research. He graduated top in the class. So in Tico we were able to move his upper jaw forward and set his lower jaw back so as to help line up his skeleton so that his teeth meshed together well. We as specialists in oral surgery are uniquely qualified uh, to provide these procedures. I just figured out this is the best facility, this is the best doctor, and I truly believe that, you know, Dr. Metz and his team, they know what they're doing. 
These patients, when we know when they come down the hallway, when we see them after this procedure, we see their level of confidence has gone up tremendously. We can tell by the smile on their face as well as their dress. They're dressed sharply and they're holding their chin up. You can certainly tell that uh, they are happier individuals afterwards. Technology today has you know, really revolutionized how we practice implant dentistry. We have uh, cone beam CTs which allow us to take a CT of the patient in the office uh, and in, in about 20 seconds we have 360 degrees of bone around uh, the implant. So we know ahead of time whether we need to graft and also the type of grafting that we need to do ahead of time. So patients are, are, are better prepared for the, uh, the experience and know more of what to expect afterwards. We are able to do this in, in, uh, in a safer fashion uh, and it's much more rapid. The procedures are much more rapid uh, and the recovery is much easier as well. Officer Wayne Schultz weighed an unhealthy 554 pounds until he met Dr. Robert Marvin. To find out more on Wayne's story and other life-changing stories, log on to topdocsofhouston.com. A bunion deformity is a deviation of the first metatarsal and the second metatarsal. So basically, you know, what people see of their big toe is this. So the big toe is pointing this way, and this bone is going out this way. When it's not matching up well, you get bone growth. And so bone starts to build up right here, and it also starts to build up top. I spend about 85% of my time traveling, so I'm in and out of the airports. Um, as a training manager, I do a lot of facilitation. So I'm on my feet a lot walking, and it got to the point where even flat shoes, what most people would think of comfortable shoes, um, became, became painful. Her surgery was an Austin bunionectomy, but it was a little bit different because uh, on the x-ray I discovered that she had severely arthritic joint. She had fracture fragments, so these fracture fragments never healed, and because they were constantly moving, it was severe pain. It caused an enormous amount of uh, bone growth on the top and on the side. So I was really excited to do her surgery because I knew it would provide immediate relief. I'll be wearing the boot for at least another four weeks and then I'll come back for another reassessment. Um, and then he'll determine then whether I can take the boot off and then just start walking in normal shoes. People always ask, you know, why do I have this problem? And uh, the biggest component, genetics. So if you look at your parents' feet, or your grandparents' feet, it's basically telling you if you see a bunion deformity that, that your chances are your feet are gonna develop these structural deformities. But then, obviously, for the females, it's wearing the high heels. You know, it's, uh, there's a price to pay for high fashion. You wear the high heel, uh, it puts your foot in position, which makes predisposes you for, to a bunion deformity. Well, I would love to be able to get back out there and be pain free. A lot of times, I couldn't wait for the day to end because I would be in so much pain. So I'm looking forward to being able to be on my feet for longer period of time is pain free. The look on the patient's face when they come in and they see the results and they're happy with the results and they see that instead of having a crooked toe or that it's actually straight and that the pain that they had before is gone. So you know that's the rewarding part to me. Hypertension, this is a bad disease. It causes two main problems strokes and heart attacks, neither of those are good. What are the magic numbers in hypertension? Well, 120 over 80 is normal. At 140 over 90 and above, we call hypertension. When you're at 160 over 110, that's when we get upset and need to become aggressive with our treatment. When you get to be 180 over 120, that's when we really get upset and that's the time to go to the emergency room for urgent or emergent treatment. What can you do to prevent hypertension or to treat it once you get it? Well, weight loss is the most important thing because being heavy is one of the biggest risk factors for becoming hypertensive. Also, lowering the salt in your diet is a good idea. You can use the DASH diet, D-A-S-H. You can find that on the internet anywhere. Getting adequate sleep and adequate exercise will reduce your blood pressure also. They say that emotional tension causes hypertension and that is true, so relax and enjoy your life, lose weight and exercise and your blood pressure will come down.
Well, people come to Houston Fertility Institute uh, because they're having difficulty getting pregnant. And we're one of the largest providers uh, in the state of Texas. Uh, one of the things that's important to recognize with fertility evaluation and therapy is it's a lot of visits to the doctor. So we try to have you know, several locations you know, in throughout Houston to make it at least disruptive to their work life, their social life, uh, and their other plans as, as can be possible. Also, people come to us because we've got a very high success rate. David and Leanne had been trying to get pregnant for a little over a year. Uh, and they had had previous evaluation uh, prior to seeing me. David is a cancer survivor and he had a pretty extensive chemotherapy back when, when he was in college. So the concern was not having another barrier identified. Could the chemotherapy have, have damaged some of the sperm function in terms of its ability to bind to, penetrate, and actually accomplish fertilization of the egg? Um, my husband and I tried to get pregnant for probably a year and a half and um, we weren't successful, so we decided to seek out Houston Fertility Institute to get some more information. So we met with Dr. Griffith, and he went over all of our treatment options and talked to us about David's cancer history and how that could potentially affect uh, my ability to get pregnant. We did IVF um, once, and it worked the first time. Um, we decided to implant two embryos, and we got twins boy and a girl, um, so I couldn't be happier with the outcome. I just can't express how badly I wanted to be a mother, and um, Dr. Griffith has played such a, an important role in making this happen for me and my husband. It's, it's quite rewarding when a patient, come, a, a couple presents with this problem, and you can get them really where they want to be, which is parents. We both experienced this from day one, but obviously when I see the birth of both of our children, you know, it'll, it'll be, uh, it'll truly be reality at that time. So, I mean, we're excited. Uh, this whole process has been fantastic and we're just really looking forward to when they're here. Okay, for more information on some of these amazing doctors you've seen on our show today, please visit our website, topdocsofhouston.com. Topdocsofhouston.com, the place to go to find some of the best doctors in the Houston area. And right now, Dr. Nita, the place to go is her next top doctor. It's one of the top plastic surgeons in the Houston area. It's Dr. Michael Eisman. Our case example is, uh, is Barbara, who was uh, in her late 60s, who we operated on uh, several months ago and uh, she was interested in removing some extra eyelid skin in her lower eyelid. I've always wanted to have my eyes done and he laid it all out. He explained to me what he was going to do. Consider the eyelid and the forehead as one aesthetic unit. Uh, the cheek, uh, the neck and the jowl area we consider as another aesthetic unit. We do combine the surgeries, however there are people who are just interested in having their face done or their eyelid done, but uh, sometimes if you just do the eyelid and not the brow, they still have that hooded appearance. He put me at ease and I knew that he was going to do a good job and he did. She really wasn't too interested in actually in her upper eyelid being done and uh, was mainly so concerned about her lower lid, but we uh, showed her some pictures before and after of people who had it done and uh, after seeing that she agreed to have her upper eyelids done and I was happy she decided to do that. And after about four weeks all the bruising was gone, most of the swelling was gone and I was shocked at how great I looked. I really was. I hadn't expected the change to be so great and I'm just really overwhelmed at how different I look. It doesn't look like she's had surgery, which is what we're basically trying to achieve is a, is a natural look, nothing stylized. Um, and, uh, but she can recognize it, and uh, that's the most important thing. And I met a lady in the bathroom who works down the hall, and she said, you look great. What did you do? What's different about you? And I started laughing, and I said, oh, I got a new hairdo. I mean, I didn't tell her, but it's amazing, and it's happened three times. And he put me so at ease, that's really what helped me make my decision that I was going to go ahead and do my eyes. Well, this has really made me feel better about myself, and so I, I really am so glad I did it.
went to a walk-in clinic one night. They told me I was having a heart attack. Sent me to the emergency room. It wasn't a heart attack, but they did run the test. The cardiologist told me that I had slight blockage. He said, you can save your life by having that surgery that you're scared to do, or you can be dead within a year. She had high blood pressure, high uh, lipids in the blood. I think she had some asthma. Um, chronic back pain, depression, I mean these are all comorbidities, we call them, of obesity. Um, and her weight was out of control and going in the wrong direction and she was heading for a big problem. So I contacted the office and my son and I did it together. We actually came to the seminar, he did his first, I did mine second and it's been a little over three years. Uh, a gastric bypass is where we uh, create a small pouch of the stomach at the top and then we bring some intestine up and hook it on to that pouch, bypassing the majority of the stomach in the very first part of the intestine. I can eat pretty much anything. It's I have to watch and maintain for the rest of my life because this surgery gets you to the low point of your weight then it's up to you to maintain it and take care of it for the rest of your life. Well, she was 330 pounds before she started. I think she's 148 pounds now. It's, that's a significant weight loss, I think, in anybody's book. Um, and that's not atypical for a gastric bypass. That would sort of be what we hope for and expect, and she's well within the bell curve of our outcomes. My advice would be it is a life changer but it's just, I did it to save my life. Some people want to do it to, for, to be vain. I didn't, I wanted to save my life and live a long time because I had kids. Nobody wants to have an operation. It's not, not fun, it hurts, you miss work, but the benefit to be gained is significant uh, and the change in life is significant and once the patients start to move in the right direction, their whole attitude usually improves quite a bit and they're much more happy. It gave me energy. It has inspired me to be and do more than I thought I could ever do in my life. What I love about dermatology is that we do have the chance to change people's lives, whether it comes to detecting a skin cancer in a very early stage and you know, saving a patient's life and, or removing a, a skin lesion that was very disfiguring and giving them a great cosmetic outcome. I had a spot on my nose that uh, was frozen when I was at UTMB in Galveston and I wanted to do a follow-up on that. I got in here and he discovered all sorts of uh, basal cell carcinomas throughout my body. I've known Mr. Lewis for about two years. He first came to me with a, a small skin cancer that we detected on his face. And it was unfortunately, it was a basal cell skin cancer. Called early enough, can be treated very easily with a great cosmetic outcome and almost no impact on a patient's quality of life. I was fortunate to have Dr. Perry as a doctor because he, he's done a lot of preventative uh, freezing and he's done uh, probably a half dozen uh, skin surgeries so far. Since then, he follows up with me very frequently because if you've had one basal cell skin cancer, it's very easy to, to develop more because you've had enough sun to cause that initial amount of sun damage to cause one skin cancer. So, so far, all of them have turned out excellent as they've been caught in an early, early stage of basal cell and, and we've been able to treat them very effectively. If anyone is out there and they have anything at all on their skin that does not look right, they need to come see Dr. Perry because they will receive the best of care. If there's any concern on their skin, if there's a lesion that's growing, any change, change in color, size, shape, whatever, if it becomes symptomatic, even if it's a false alarm, go to a board certified dermatologist right away because if it's a skin cancer and it's detected early, it has excellent prognosis. So even if it's a false alarm, it can at least give you peace of mind that it's, it's a normal skin lesion. Dr. Perry is very astute and he's able to pick on, up on a lot of things that are just not related to skin, but in other areas that where I might need care. He has the best staff. Uh, these people are very, very kind and very, very courteous and helpful. Aaron's a, a gentleman in his 30s who had several years of spinal pain coming from his neck. So he had pain in his neck radiating to his shoulders and upper extremities. And at that point, uh, we had diagnosed him as having degenerative disc disease in the cervical spine at two levels. Imagine 
walking around through your day in your head never being in a place of rest and you're constantly hurting and then you think okay it's bedtime I didn't look forward to laying down and going to bed because it still hurt so he underwent physical therapy he underwent some injections and just the passage of time and taking medications and over the course of two to three years he decided that his symptoms had become severe enough and were no longer responding to what we call non-operative treatment never during that time did he ever say you need surgery right now you need it right if you want to be fixed you need surgery you need to go have surgery never did that those kind of things not pressuring me let my body talk to me let me know when i was ready that just it let me know that he cared uh, we offered him fusion of the cervical spine at two levels so fusion means for example in this model that this bone is fused to this bone uh, and that's called the fusion, so there's no motion here. And hopefully what that does is eliminates the pain. Uh, the first time I actually laid down without pain, I was excited. I was super excited. I couldn't believe it. Because um, I, I could never find a point of rest before that. So that's when I was really, really happy about it. And, and I knew that it worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the more satisfying things about doing what I do is to hear the positive stories of how the, the surgical treatment positively impacted the lives of various people. And yes, we do hear the comment quite often that, you know, I don't know why I waited this long uh, to get this fixed. He said, just don't, don't put anything on your head or carry anything on your head. He said, help me with that. He said, just use common sense. And uh, he said, you can resume your everyday activities. The very next day I was golfing. <laughs> I just appreciated that, him taking his time. And uh, the end result was just perfect, and it was great. I feel awesome. Kimberly was born with a facial birth defect until she met Dr. Michael Eisman. Now she's a beautiful young girl. To find out more on Kimberly's story and other life-changing stories, log on to topdotsofhouston.com. Dr. Meredith Morgan is one of the best physicians in helping women manage menopause. Practicing for over 35 years, Dr. Morgan, as you see, has a unique office. It's located in the Museum District, a freestanding facility with a relaxed atmosphere. Today's topic, perimenopause. It's really important to understand that this is a normal process and it happens with all women. It starts in their mid-40s, the average age of onset is 47, and on average it lasts about four years. According to Dr. Morgan, perimenopause represents a change. Women will experience a number of symptoms. This is a time of relative estrogen deficiency and brings on mind, mood, memory, and even sleep disorders and irregularities. Um, yes, there are hot flashes and night sweats that most women think of as menopausal, and yes, they can be just as severe as the postmenopausal ones, uh, but the differentiation between transitioning and a non-cycling constant state is the unpredictability and uncertainty that can be so distressing to a woman. For women experiencing perimenopause, Dr. Morgan outlines the next step. We have three levels of management. The first will be basically lifestyle uh, adjustments and home remedies. The second is non-hormonal medical prescriptions. And the third is hormonal management. Uh, we want to treat at the lowest dose for the shortest duration, consistent with what the need is. Uh, we have to understand it's important to use what is acceptable to the woman herself. In my mind, without a doubt, we've taken a step forward for the city of Houston and its in surrounding environments. Uh, we've developed a site that is comfortable and convenient that provides medical center quality with l minimizing the hassle that's involved. Uh, it's been very rewarding to have done this for the last 10 years and I'm looking forward to the next 10 and 20 years in continuing to do and help women throughout the entire region. Here at Revella Plastic Surgery, we perform plastic and reconstructive surgery. We emphasize aesthetic procedures, primarily of the breast, body, and face. The ideal candidate for a breast lift would be a woman who's completed their childbearing, 
their breasts change during pregnancy or during lactation, and they have perhaps stretch marks, excess skin, and they've lost a lot of the fullness in their upper part of their breast. So typically they're gonna want everything lifted as if what a bra can do for them. Um, and that may involve an implant or without an implant. After birthing three children, I needed some help. So I came and saw Dr. Ravella. I knew some people in the area that have had his work done or had work done by him. And so I was pleased and came to see him as well. Amy came to us with uh, sagging breast and after children. She wanted them uplifted. She wanted to be able to wear certain tops and clothing that look perky without being saggy and having to wear special undergarments that were uh, cumbersome or bulky. So what we performed was uh, uplift with uh, implants and she's turned out very nicely and she's happy with the results. I had friends that after I had it done looked like I had lost 10 to 15 pounds and I had done nothing different with my eating or anything. It was just the way that the top of me was carried before versus after. It's a fairly quick recovery after a breast lift and it takes about maybe about a month to six weeks to get back on your feet feeling like there's, you know, like you did before. The entire office staff is wonderful. They are all very helpful. He's super nice. He is very informative, very helpful. We'll take your calls if you need to ask him any questions. He is there if he can't answer them. His nurses are there and available to you, but he is um, great as far as explaining everything and being there and being there when you come out of your procedure to make sure you're okay. Yes, I would recommend Dr. Rovella. He is wonderful as far as his help and the courteousness of his staff and his results are fantastic. Before I met Dr. Traum, um, my quality of life had gone downhill due to the carpal tunnel uh, syndrome. I was unable to even get a good night's sleep. My passion is dogs, and I was unable to feel comfortable doing the thing that I love with the dogs, and um, they're show dogs, so we have a lot of grooming and drumbling with their nails, and my husband had to do all of that because I was unable to to do it. The typical symptoms are patients report having uh, classically numbness and tingling uh, in their hand. Frequently it wakes them up at night. They can have pain as well. Um, sometimes it's a mixture of the two. Even loading the dogs in a crate and driving them to the shows became something kind of scary before I had the surgery done. Your median nerve which crosses your wrist at your carpal tunnel uh, is under pressure. It's being squashed. So it goes to sleep, just like your leg going to sleep when you sit too long. The treatments uh, are designed to try and take pressure off of the nerve. Initially, we try to do that conservatively with splinting, steroid injections, and anti-inflammatory medication. If that doesn't work, or if the carpal tunnel syndrome uh, is really bad, then we do offer surgery, which serves to decompress the nerve. I was really looking for a pain-free solution and a permanent solution to to get rid of this problem. So he described what would happen that um, he would make two incisions. I would have a small dressing. It would be done on an outpatient basis. Then the thing that I had to do was go home and make sure that I followed all the directions that he gave me, which I did to a T. <laughs> you can see that there's actually a groove that it's made by the bone. In the carpal tunnel, the walls and the floor are all bone. But what makes the ceiling of the carpal tunnel is this rubbery ligament that sits on top. And it's that ligament that we cut to splay apart and take the pressure off of the nerve. I am so grateful to Dr. Traum for the pain freedom that I have gotten from this surgery. It has truly given me my quality of life back. All right, that'll do it. That'll wrap up another edition of Top Docs in Houston, the show that features some of the best doctors and procedures and the Houston area. If you want to find out more about any of the doctors you've seen on today's show, head to the website topdocsofhouston.com. And if you have a comment or maybe a question for one of our doctors, we would love to hear from you. So send us an email at info at topdocsofhouston.com. So long everyone, we will see you next week.